Hey, this is Corey, and this is going to be a quick tour of the new AI development features that I just shipped into SAS Pegasus. While the demos here are done on a SAS Pegasus project, all of this stuff can easily be configured in any project, really. Uh, and I'll link to all the information to set this up on your own projects in the description of this video. All right, so if you go into a Pegasus project now, you will see two new settings under Coding Assistance, one for Cursor and one for Cloud Code. Uh, you can turn on either of these or both. They do very similar things, but for different tools. Um, the first thing that they do is they generate rules files. Um, so in Cursor, if you're not aware, Cursor is an AI-enabled uh, IDE that is really useful for coding. Um, and if I go here into my Cursor settings and then under rules, Basically, you can define project-specific rules for the AI to help understand your code base. And then so you can give it uh, different suggestions about style. Um, for agents, you can tell it sort of like what kind of commands to run. Um, and then you can sort of give different uh, hints for different types of files. So for example, if I'm working with Django templates, uh, I want to apply the guidelines for working with Django templates and so on. Um, so Pegasus will ship with all of these different guidelines out of the box, you can see there's sort of like general stuff, like always prefer simple solutions and avoid duplicating code and, and stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, there's more specific stuff that maybe applies to, uh, you know, Python code specifically, which will say, you know, use PEP8 and Ruff is doing the formatting and linting. And here's some stuff about how Django is used. Um, so these will all now come out of the box and Cursor will sort of smartly include these as context when you're working with your code base. And I found that it can be uh, quite useful just to sort of get the AI to behave how you want it to behave. If you're using Claude, Claude doesn't have these sort of separated rules files. So the rules just kind of all get dumped into a nicely formatted markdown file uh, for Claude.md, which is what Claude uses to sort of get its instructions from. So those are rules. The second thing I want to demo is MCP. MCP, if you're not familiar, stands for Model Context Protocol. And basically, it's kind of a way for AIs to get tools. And the easiest way to explain this is probably through a demo. So let's go into my terminal here. And I'm just going to run Claude. Um, and if you haven't seen this before, this is Claude Code. It's a command line interface that is um, another AI tool that you can work with your project in. So Pegasus will now ship with this .mcp.json file, which Claude will automatically discover. And this will uh, give Claude access to two new tools. One is Postgres, which will allow it to inspect your database schemas and uh, make queries against your database. The other is uh, Playwright, which will allow it to actually control a web browser for you. So I'll demo the Postgres uh, version first. And basically, what you can see is you can now sort of ask Claude questions that should be answered by your database, and it will go ahead and use that plugin. So let's say, like, how many users are signed up? And so Claude can quickly do a count of our user table and tell us how many users are there. Um, this is my dev database for Pegasus, so I can ask it questions about Pegasus itself. So I can say, like, how many licenses are there? I can say like, what percent of projects are using Tailwind? And so this is really powerful as a way to just sort of do sort of ad hoc insights against your database. Um, it's really cool. I was kind of blown away that it works. And the whole thing is configured with just a few lines of code. I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. So basically, you just give it access to uh, this Postgres MCP NPX command. You point it at your development database, and you're off to the races. All right, so that's database access. The last thing I want to show you is browser support. Uh, this will be a bit of an experiment. We'll see if it works or not. But so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to sort of introduce a bug in my landing page. So um, right now, if I go to my landing page, you'll see I have this sort of like nice three-column uh, feature layout there. And I'm going to like move this thing out of that if statement so that this gets all messed up. And then what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to say to Claude, uh, I'm going to ask it to fix it. So I'm just going to try something like that. And hopefully, Claude will try to use its browser tool and see the bug and 
then find and fix the bug. Let's see if it works. So you can actually watch it browsing and you can see it saw the grid layout. It is now kind of going into, well, it's looking for the right code to edit. And look at that. It figured out that it should move that back into the template. And uh, okay, and it doesn't need to restart the server. And so now uh, it's going to go in and take another screenshot. Okay, it wants to scroll. Let's look and see it scrolling. Found the section. And perfect. Features are now displayed in a proper three column layout. So yeah, this is really cool stuff. It totally feels like we're coding in the future now. And, um, and I'm excited to bring this to all Pegasus projects moving forwards. So that was a whirlwind overview. Hopefully this has been useful and I will see you next time.